Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Shay. I'm a full-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and Macari. I am Tyler, part-time seller on eBay, Macari, Poshmark. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the daily refinement versus valley root saga, I suppose. Yeah, it's a bit of a back and forth, and we are tentatively stepping in and giving our two cents. Just gonna give you guys our opinion. You guys seem to like it when we talk about things that are going on in the community, so we're gonna do just that for you. Um, but before we get into it, you do have a shirt. I do. I have a Batman Sugar Skull t-shirt from the Thrift With Us flea market edition that we did with the, the new GoPro. Yeah. And I had to pick it up, so I figured I'd wear it for the first time on camera. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so this is a back and forth. There's a lot going on, and I want to state for the record, I did not know either uh, Rally Roots or Daily Refinement. I have no personal relationships with them, yeah. so I have no way of knowing what is truthful or what is, you know, us. Or how they both really feel about the whole circumstance because right. that is just not something that we are privy to. Right. right. We are peons in the reselling community. We don't know any of that stuff, but we wanted to share with you what we have seen uh, from the back and forth and what we have learned. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys that are trying to piece together what's going on. So to start with what happened. So what happened is Daily Refinement released a video after having been permanently banned from eBay, explaining his side of things in as much detail as he probably felt was necessary for something that was still new to him and probably pretty upsetting and painful. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, so he just gave his thoughts and tried to give his side of things on the ban. Yeah, so what he said in his video essentially was that he was selling a high volume and that means more than $2 million worth of sneakers. And eBay reached out to him and wanted an invoice for said sneakers. So they wanted an item by item invoice stating where he got these sneakers from. He stated that he got these from a friend and he wasn't able to provide an invoice for that. Uh, he did state in a later video that he was able to provide receipts. He did have a paper trail for IRS purposes and things like that showing that he got this from a friend, but this wasn't good enough for eBay. They wanted more than that. They wanted to see that this person had the legal authority to be selling this stuff, you know, an authorized distributor or something of that nature. And he wasn't able to provide that. So he was banned for that reason. So of course this leads to speculation in the community. It went a little bit crazy at times. There was a lot of different things going around for quite a bit and people were just jumping in from the top rope saying, this is what happened. No, I have this, the true story. No, you have to listen to me and, yeah. and no one actually knows. Right, I mean, I do understand that the community got a little bit nervous that this meant that eBay might start banning people for selling items yeah. where we don't have invoices because if you're not in the reselling community, you might not know, but it is not super common to have invoices for the typical reseller. If you're selling wholesale, you'll have an invoice. If you're selling straight from the store, retail arbitrage and does that, you probably will have an invoice, things like that. But if you're buying from a thrift store, uh, the receipts basically say women's dresses blue. Yeah. So that would not be an invoice. That wouldn't count. Or if you're buying from a yard sale, you do cash, uh, things like that. So people got, people got a little bit scared. So this led to Rally Roots. Rally Roots came out with a video and uh, he stated that this was in an effort to calm tensions and calm the concerns of people that were worried about being likewise banned uh, because if they're going after one of the bigger, more established sellers, then people were very concerned, right or wrong, that this would also mean eBay would target them as well. Yeah. So Rally Roots video uh, was basically summing up what Chris Bailey Refinement stated in his video. However, uh, he did give his own speculation. Yeah, he did kind of just throughout the entire video say, these are just my thoughts and I'm just speculating here and I am I have no evidence either way. Right, but um, his speculation was a big one. So basically what he stated was there was, during the pandemic, there were break-ins in the LA area. And I guess Daily Refinement lives in the LA area. Again, I don't know this. Um, that's what was stated in Rally Roots video. Um, but there were break-ins and they were for uh, high-end shoe stores. And yes. these high-end shoe stores sold shoes similar to what Daily Refinement was selling. Yes. So he kind of said, this seems like it could be related. Maybe eBay got notified that one of the shoes stolen from the store was one of daily refinements. Maybe that's what happened. That's rally root speculation. Right. And there could have been either overlap or 
he unknowingly received the stolen item or something going on there, which there is no evidence to support that. Right. And Rally Roots did say in his video, he didn't think that if that were the case, that uh, Daily Refinement had any knowledge that they were stolen, that he wasn't obviously personally doing the stealing. Um, but none of that. He thought that it might have happened as like a, an accidental situation where he just ended up with something that came from those stores. That was the speculation. But that didn't go over so well. No. So Daily Refinement took that a little bit understandably personally. Not Originally, though, in the comment section, which I'll throw up some of the comments from back and forth just really quick, and you guys can pause to read them, Daily Refinement seemed okay with the video, but I'm not sure if because um, Rally Roots is quite large in the community and it spread like wildfire, that it may have impacted Daily Refinement on, you know, kind of thinking it over and seeing the backlash. I'm not sure. I can, I can understand that. Taking a moment to go, wait, this is, this is not the narrative of what happened and... It's not the narrative he wanted out there, which I can understand not wanting people to think you so. stole things or sold stolen things. So Daily Refinement did come out with a response video, he did. which was spicy. Woo! It was, uh, if you like hot tea, that was hot. Definitely. If you are looking to indulge in some reseller drama, that is the video. Yeah. Woo! Uh, it basically said that I have never had any policy violations. I have never done anything that would be questionable. That would result in a ban. I've never sold stolen items. Or counterfeit or, or any counterfeit of that. Or counterfeit or anything of that nature. Uh, I actually have the clean record when compared to Rally Roots, essentially. Yeah. Was... He, uh, he did call Rally Roots out. I will say that he pointed out a video of Rally Roots that we actually saw, like one of the first Rally Roots videos yeah. we ever saw. But Rally Roots had obtained stolen beats. And he was very honest about this in his video, Rally Roots, I mean. Then he didn't know what happened, but yeah. he ended up selling them and then un unfortunately ended up selling them to an undercover cop. He didn't end up going to jail or anything like that, but he could have. That's something you can go to jail for. Um, and yeah, Daily Refinement went for that. He went for a few other things in the video too, but definitely looked like it was a... Um, you come for me, I'm going to come for you right back kind of deal. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, he also mentioned, which he mentioned before, but he doubled down on the fact that this source of goods that he was not able to prove to eBay was a celebrity friend. Yes. And he actually, in Daily Refinance video, he posted a photo with the face blurred out of presumably his celebrity friend. Yeah. So we can put that on the screen here. That's the blurred photo. The blurred photo. The blurred photo. Uh, I don't really know what he was thinking because Google image search is a thing. <laughs> so we did find that picture and we're going to post them side by side. Yeah. So you can see these are the same. They are the same photo. What I will say before I say the name of who this celebrity is, you can see the photo. So you probably already know, but if you don't, you don't, I will say this may not be his celebrity friend. What he could have done is just posted a picture of a celebrity with sneakers and just use that as his, you know, as a picture to put up while talking to keep the video interesting. But it also very well could absolutely be his celebrity friend, which it, I think that's I entirely think possible. My opinion is it is, but I think that's a safe assumption that he used a photo of his friend and put out the photo. Yeah, I don't know. So this is Chai McBride, right? That's that's what it is. Yeah. Um, he I think is most well known for Hawaii Five O. Uh, he's in that. He's in house for a period of time. Uh, he's. In a lot of things. And that article uh, links, or that photo links back to an article about him being a sneakerhead. So yeah, he's this... definitely, definitely he loves sneakers. Yeah. So that part of it certainly fits. So, right. So that seems to be where he's getting the goods. So one thing I want to talk about while we're talking about all of this is the shoes that Daily Refinement is selling, he stated in the video, were samples, not for resale. So that kind of leads to a big question. If they are samples and not for resale, was he allowed to sell them? Was that something he shouldn't be doing? Was that illegal? I think we all kind of wanted to know that and kind of questioned our own selves. Um, I personally sold a pair of Vince shoes that were labeled as sample, not for resale. And we can probably share a picture of those somewhere on the screen. I think we've also had a couple things uh, otherwise come in that had that uh, from time to time. But right. I think, well, I know because we've looked it up that it is not illegal to resell those, uh, provided that you have not agreed to in writing and signed a contract stating that you would not resell them because the onus is on the company to obtain your consent to prevent you from doing something. 
Yeah, so um, we looked at a few different Reddit threads, a few different articles, just to, to make sure, because you, you never know in this world. That you're... And we are not attorneys. We are not lawyers. <laughs> no. I am not a lawyer. No, this is not legal advice. This no. is just, this is what's on the interwebs. Um, but basically, yeah, so the not for resale marker is supposed to state that the people that they have a contract with cannot resell it. We as consumers of the item that did not purchase it from a retailer or do not receive it from a retailer is not part of that agreement. So we are free to do with it what we want because as we've stated in other videos, first sale doctrine exists and we own it now, we can do as we please. Um, but there are some wrinkles in that, right? So first of all, eBay is a private platform. So eBay can say for any reason that they don't want an item sold. So if in this case, they don't want samples sold, maybe because the brand is a big brand and they don't want to deal with it, maybe because they just don't don't want it, maybe they just don't like that. They just don't want to assume any kind of appearance of liability or just have that hanging over their head with the uncertainty. They're going to say, that's not our thing. No, thank you. Please take it elsewhere. Right. So eBay absolutely could say that. The other wrinkle in this is it is unknown whether or not the source of the items, whether it be Charlie McBride or some other celebrity, um, or maybe you didn't get it from a celebrity at Person all. Person or knows? store, some, some other entity. Right. It is unknown whether or not they had a contract with the retailer, in this case, likely Nike, where they were not allowed to resale the items. And if that is the case, that is also a problem. These items cannot be sold to daily refinement because the contract existed between the original source and the brand. So we don't know. Those things all could be possible. It could just be a, they were sampled not for resale, but there was no contract in place between the celebrity and, but eBay just didn't like it. There's no yeah. way to know these things. Um, but there's a lot of things in there that could have happened. And at the end of it, I think it's a big wake up call to the reselling community to yeah. One, pay attention to what you're doing. Make sure that you know that your items are legitimate. Make sure that you know that they were sourced legitimately and make sure that you know that if you don't have a track record of where you got things, which I'll be honest, a lot of my items I don't. I couldn't prove where I got most of it because I get it at a thrift store, which isn't documented properly. It's just receipts that say nothing. So know that eBay at any time can tell you that you have to remove it and they could also ban your account for it. They, they can. And how the other, the other part of this to me is that no one is going to know with any degree of certainty unless daily refinement shares the exact verbatim conversation between himself and eBay uh, or someone from eBay comes out and speaks out and provides a, a verbatim conversation which, won't record, which will not happen. So there is no way that anyone can tell you definitively what happened. And if they do tell you what the definitively happened, it's really just their opinion. Right. So to sum up, what can we learn from this? I think, first of all, we should all remember that we shouldn't be concerned. Um, eBay is very unlikely to go after all resellers to look for invoices and things like that. That's a ton of labor, first of all, like just from a how much work that would be standpoint. That's crazy, right? That's that's not going to happen. Second of all, he, Daily Refinement said himself that the reason that this set off red flags was not because he sold one not for sale item. It's because he sold $2 million. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't even think I'm going to see $2 million in sales in 10 years of my reselling business. So I'm not concerned <laughs> about that. Um, so unless you're selling really, really large volumes, I really don't think there's anything to worry about. I'm not a lawyer. I can't give you that kind of advice in that way. But as a reseller, I'm not going to be concerned about it because it's not something that happens. If you do come into a situation where you're going to sell that amount or spend that amount for inventory, maybe take pause. Keep, keep records of that and keep a detailed transaction and do your due diligence. Right. But at the end of the day, I don't think the average reseller has anything to worry about. I don't think this is anything to set off alarms. I think this is just a situation where it was a lot of money and a liability and eBay just decided that they weren't willing to take that liability. So at the end of it, I don't think Rally Roots is in the wrong for speaking for the community. I think he was doing what he could to try and help people go get a little bit more at ease. And I don't think Daily Refinement did anything terribly wrong. I think he just had something to happen that kind of stinks. I mean, my personal opinion is that they are both kind of wrong for different things. Okay. So I 
I don't think that daily refinement was wrong in doing the selling. I think that there probably is an instance of eBay not wanting to accept the liability, which is, he can certainly understand. And he wants to protect his friend and his source of the shoes, which right, we, could be, we all want to protect our we sources. We could be wildly wrong on whom that person is, but I don't necessarily know that he handled it in the appropriate way. Rally Roots, I think there was a a bit of poor taste in how he handled that video, mm -hmm. and the video could have been done in a more productive, constructive way to to put people at ease. What do you mean by that? Well, so it was, there was no evidence that there was any wrongdoing or even the even the appearance of wrongdoing where there was stolen goods don't, doesn't have to be mentioned at all. And he could have said, you don't have to worry. Your store is not going to be affected by this. This is a one-off kind of fluke circumstance without getting into the specifics of wild speculation. Uh, and that just kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. That's fair. On, on top of the, the self-promotion at the start of it, which there's nothing wrong with self-promotion, but to tie it to a controversial topic, I think is a little bit uh, self-serving and short-sighted. That's fair. So, I mean, as you can see, we have a little bit different feelings on the topic just here in our own home. So I'm, I'm sure you guys have plenty of different thoughts on the topic. So definitely use the comment section as a way to talk with each other. Please keep it civil. And also please don't give hate either way to either creator. I, I don't, I don't condone that kind of stuff and I don't, I don't want any of that. And please don't put wild theories in the comments that have no basis in fact. You can, you know, make your opinions and you, if you have things you want to speculate that have some kind of fact behind it, that's okay. But just don't go too crazy. We don't, we don't want a conspiracy theory of this. It is somebody's business and someone's life. So I want to just keep that in mind as we discuss this. We left the tinfoil hats in one of our last videos for the conspiracy. Yeah, you guys can go find those. They're there. We just don't want to bring that into somebody's life. That's, I get a little bit protective on that. So that, that's everything we have. I think that this, this situation has gotten a little bit blown up, a little bit crazy. It's definitely entertaining, but remember that this is people's yeah, lives it's... and people's businesses, and we should keep that in check when we are enjoying the entertainment. Remember that other people are not enjoying it. I think that's fair. So that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really soon with a new video. And thank you all again for watching.